I'd like to sort of convey the, the significant pleasure, but more importantly, the privilege that I feel that I'm being involved, invited to speak uh, again on, on a narration which is named after such an illustrious uh, medical son of Gujarat. And it is uh, my humble gratitude to the organizers for having considered me for this. Uh, it's always a little difficult to follow Dr. Mohan after his oration, which is invariably spectacular. So I will try my best to follow and fill in those very big shoes which have just been uh, left for me. In uh, keeping with the theme of this conference, I've tried to align the topic of my uh, talk uh, to discuss about vascular complications. And this is going to be a talk which is going to be restricted to youth onset diabetes, which is an area of a special interest for me. And again, I'll focus on an Indian perspective because uh, um, we have enough of our own data. Dr. Mohan just showed you the amount of data India has generated. I think we have enough to run several conferences and we don't need to quote international literature. And that has been the biggest gain in Indian research for the last uh, two or three decades. Uh, with this, uh, let me also say that most of my conversation today will be based on uh, data which is generated through the um, ICMR Young Diabetes Registry. I've been fortunate to be associated with this registry, which is perhaps the largest national registry for youth onset diabetes in the world. This registry has still now uh, recruited more than 21,500 patients with youth onset diabetes, which is a very, very large number. It operates through 11 regional collaborating centers, but the data are collected from 205 reporting centers from across India. And it's a very simple clinic-based registry, which is based on clinical uh, parameters and a database of 10 variants of diabetes is collected, but the dominant ones are type 1 diabetes, which constitutes about two thirds of the patients and type 2 diabetes, which constitute about a quarter of the patients. And we also have follow up data available for the past 20 years. However, today's talk will be largely restricted to baseline data. This, this particular slide gives you a sense that the registry gets information from the north and the south, from the west and the east. So it's a reasonably spread out data acquisition for this registry. I won't claim that it's nationally representative in its true sense, but there is a reasonable collection from different parts of the country, both public and private institutions. Just to give you a sense, I talked to you about the reporting centers, 205 of these. So essentially data is collected at these reporting centers. And that data then goes to what are called the regional collaborating center. So I'll give you an example of Delhi. Delhi being normally these are single collaborating centers in each city, but Delhi and Bombay being larger cities have two collaborating centers. So let's take Ames as an example. Ames, New Delhi is a collaborating center, but Ames is also a place where I see patients. So I also provide data. So I'm a reporting center. The 20, 25 reporting centers associated with the AIMS collaborating center will send information to AIMS. And similarly, other reporting centers will send their information to the corresponding collaborating center. These collaborating centers have the responsibility of collecting the data, cleaning the data, and doing quality checks. And then they send this information to the National Technical Coordinating Unit, which for this particular study is also housed at Ames New Delhi. We manage the data, the data is analyzed, and then we send it to the National Coordination at the Indian Council of Medical Research. So that's the flow. The three important things I want to tell you about the eligibility for a participant, Study was initiated in 2006. However, as a matter of policy, it was decided that we will take all cases who registered in one of the reporting centers as new patients on or after the 1st of January 2000. So there's a proportion of data which is retrospective. And then from 2006 onwards is prospective data. What was important was that at the time these patients were diagnosed to have diabetes, they should have been either 25 years or younger in age. And the third thing which is important is that they should have, they should belong to an assigned geographical area. So if the patient is coming to one of the collaborating centers in Delhi, they should belong to the national capital region. We know that, for example, patients in Delhi, patients coming to institutions in Delhi may come from 
far away cities, but we don't include those patients for this particular. So we have a defined geographical area for recruitment, which is important when we want to look at denominators for various aspects. Again, just to give you a little sense, this study has now entered its third phase. I will predominantly be talking to you about data collected in the first and the second phase. As I mentioned, the for, there was a portion of retrospective data which happened from 2000 to 2005. The first phase then went on from 2006 to 2011, and the next phase in 2011 to 2019. And for the retrospective data, we had medical records. For all prospective data, when the patient registers in a reporting center, a baseline performer is filled. And this baseline performer is a source of most of what I'll be presenting to you today. And then when these patients come on follow-up, every year when they come for their first visit in that calendar year, a follow-up performer is filled to see what has changed between the last year till now. As I mentioned, this is a clinical classification. We don't do blood work because this was a bloodless registry. We took the, the diagnosis made by the reporting center, but we gave clinical diagnostic criteria. So as, as you can make out, about two thirds of the patients are type one diabetes and about one quarter of the patients are type two diabetes. Now, that's the very first important thing I want to, want to point out that when we actually envisage this registry, which happened in about 2001, 2002, we had assumed that 100% of our patients or nearly 100% of our patients in this registry will be people with type one diabetes. But the way type two diabetes has evolved in India, the younger ages in which it started coming, we find that about a quarter of the patients in the registry are people with type two diabetes. And if you look at those who were diagnosed between 20 and 25 years of age, the number becomes about 45%. So type two diabetes is becoming younger and younger in its age of presentation. And I'm repeatedly saying this because it has relevance to the vascular complications, which I should narrate to you in a moment. The second important thing, which is important for me to, ex to express is the significant regional variation. Now I've mentioned about two thirds of people have type one diabetes, but if you look at both phase one and phase two, in most places about 75 to 85 or 90% of people have type one diabetes, but they are significant outliers. So if you look at phase one, you'll find the data from Dr. Mohan's collaborating center, a large part of which is provided by patients attending his clinic, nearly 40% of them had type 2, and therefore only about 40% had type 1. Similarly, patients coming from the Assam Medical College, Dibrugar, uh, the collaborating center from the Dibrugar area in the Northeast, again, only 45% type 1. And a very similar number was also seen in phase two, when we came to Manipur, and this is the Regional Institute of Medical Sciences in Imphal. So three sites or three collaborating centers very clearly had a disproportionately higher type two. Now, whether that represents a background prevalence, that represents the referral patterns, the sort of institutions that they are being collected from, that's an important question, but just to show that there is a definite regional heterogeneity. Coming to the main part of this talk, which is the presence of vascular complications and risk factors. So I'll talk predominantly of microvascular complications. And then for macrovascular disease, I'll predominantly talk of risk factors because these are younger patients and the number of events are fewer. Before I go ahead, I just wanted to clarify again that this was a study which depended on what was done at the reporting center. So there was a fair amount of flexibility in the method of assessment. So for example, for retinopathy, in most sites, a direct ophthalmoscopy was used to diagnose, but in some centers, for example, in Dr. Mohan's clinic, there was a retinal fundus photography, which was used. For neuropathy, touch sensation using monofilament, a tuning fork for vibration, and a standard ankle reflex using a percussion hammer was used for nephropathy, a standard criteria of either a 24-hour protein excretion or a 24-hour albumin excretion. For CAD and stroke, of course, you needed a documented history. This is the first slide on vascular complication results. And the first thing I'd like to point out is that this is based on information for more than 15 
thousand people. So the the number is very very important because with this number we are in a good position to come up with very reliable and robust data. Now let me take you through the three main microvascular complications to start with. And the first thing I'd like to point out: remember, this is baseline data. So this is when they came to those reporting centers, which could have been very soon after they were diagnosed with disease could have been a few months or even a few years after they were diagnosed with disease, as long as they were coming as a new patient in that place. So for example, somebody living in another part of India moves to Delhi, they were diagnosed with diabetes less than 25 years of age, but they came to Delhi only in 2010. They came to Ames and showed for the first time in Ames in 2010, they will still be recruited in the study, though their duration of disease at baseline is already approximately 10 years. However, I'd also like to point out that nearly 50% of patients with type 1 diabetes in this registry came to one of the reporting centers within six months of diagnosis. So nearly incident disease for type 1 diabetes for the duration for type 1 and type 2 in many centers could be more. Point number one, if you look at the the but the, the prevalence of complications at the time they registered at the reporting center, the first thing which comes out is a significant difference between the complication burden in youth onset type 1 versus youth onset type 2. 4% retinopathy prevalence in type 1 diabetes, nearly twice as much in type 2 diabetes, 3% in nephropathy, about a 50% excess in type 2. 3% of neuropathy in type 1, and again, about 2 to 2.5 fold increase in type 2. This, that data for stroke and CAD is not very different. As you can see, the numbers are very, very small because this is a relatively young population. So the first thing which came to our mind was, are we dealing with something bizarre in India? Why is there so much higher prevalence of complications in type 2 diabetes in the young? or youth onset type 2 diabetes compared to youth onset type 1. And we immediately looked for data from elsewhere, just for a comparison. And this is data from the search registry in the USA, which actually interestingly started in 2001, the same time when we started collecting patients and had very similar collection criteria. And what you can see very clearly is that if you look at diabetic kidney disease, retinopathy or peripheral neuropathy, the prevalence in Type 2 diabetes is somewhere between two to three fold higher than patients with type 1 diabetes. And the adjusted odds ratio, as I showed for the Indian data, is very similar to what is reported in search, which was 2.2 to 2.5 fold higher. So the first message and the most important message actually for my entire talk is that youth onset type 2 diabetes is much more prone to vascular complications. We tend to ignore this disease because we feel that, you know, a lot of effort goes into type 1, multiple injections, a lot of monitoring. We'll just give a tablet or two to the patient with type 2 diabetes and they'll be all right. But it's a nasty, nasty disease with a very high risk of vascular complications. Was there regional variation in the prevalence of complications? Again, as you can see, for most complications in most places, the prevalence of nephropathy and retinopathy was between three and six percent, most places. So this is the Delhi center, uh, nephropathy about 2.3, retinopathy about three percent, both the Delhi centers. This is uh, Katak again, about two to three percent. If you look at um, uh, the, the other centers here, in uh, this is the Mumbai KEM center, again, five and five percent. So by and large, three to six percent burden of retinopathy and nephropathy. Two places where the numbers are very, very different. If you look here, these are data from the Chennai Collaborating Center. This is their retinopathy burden, nearly 14 percent as opposed to between three and six percent everywhere else. And this is the nephropathy data from PGI Chandigarh, the collaborating center based out of there, nearly 10% nephropathy as opposed to a 3 to 6% everywhere else. Now, the first thing people will say is, has the utility of fundus photography in, in Madras Diabetes Research Foundation made a difference? 
Possibly, yes, to some extent. But actually, if you we actually looked at it in much more greater detail. And this difference, and this is for type 1 diabetes. And again, you'll see that in type 2 diabetes, the same sort of trend. Most places, slightly higher than type 1 diabetes. You know, it's from 3 to 6, it becomes 4 to 8 percent. But a very high retinopathy prevalence in the Madras Collaborating Center and a very high nephropathy prevalence in the Chandigarh Collaborating Center. So this is type 2 diabetes of young. We looked at the aged diagnosis, the aged reg registration, the duration of disease, and the diagnostic criteria used. And actually, there was not much difference. So very interesting. There are differences emerging in vascular complications, but clearly the gradient between type 2 and type 1 diabetes persists. Now, we all know that duration of disease has a very important part. And these are now data. Again, look at the numbers. About 11,000 plus people with type 1 diabetes, just under 4,000 people with youth onset type 2 diabetes. Clearly, very, very large numbers. The first thing you'll see for retinopathy, nothing much happening in the first five years. The numbers become a little bit more by the time they reach 10 years, about 10% approximately for whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, but then look what happens after 10 years since diagnosis. A very sharp increase, a threefold increase here and a threefold increase here, and you can see the curves widening. So you can clearly see that the difference which was there to some extent from the very beginning between type 1 and type 2 became much, much more exaggerated as you went beyond 10 years of disease diagnosis. Now, whether it's only for retinopathy, well, that's not the case. You're seeing the same in neuropathy, the difference being already more obvious by the time it's 10 years, but a sharp gradient. And you can see the difference becoming much more marked by the time you're crossing 10 years. The nephropathy story seems to be different, though there is a very sharp increment happening after 10 years. The difference is not as apparent in this particular data set. But again, that means what happens a lot of our patients when we are seeing for the first five, six years of disease, we feel comfortable, oh, there's no complication, everything is fine, but look what happens after 10 years of disease. Very, very dramatic. I'm raising these points because Remember, these are people who develop disease at the age of 15, 16, 17, 20 years of age. When you're saying 10 years of duration, they're still 30 years of age, right? So imagine getting nephropathy at 30 years of age. That means eventually there is a nearly 100% chance that a lot of them will go into chronic kidney disease requiring dialysis and renal replacement. That is very, very troublesome information as far as I can say. This is now data from our own type 1 diabetes at Ames. Again, this is about 400 people with type 1 diabetes. You'll see that about 20% had some evidence of diabetic retinopathy. So about 78 or 80, 80 people had. Out of these 80, mild disease in 60%, but 40% had either moderate to severe NPDR or proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And if you now look at the prevalence of diabetic macular edema, out of the 20% who had diabetic retinopathy, a quarter had diabetic macular edema. Remember, these are young people. And they're very, very young to acquire these problems. The likelihood of progression to vision-threatening disease therefore becomes very high. These are data from Dr. Mohan's clinic. Again, looking at the prevalence of complications of youth onset type 2 diabetes based on duration. The previous slide from Ames was type 1 diabetes. Very clear stepwise gradient. As you can see, less than 5 years, 5 to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, and more than 50 years. Look at the youth onset type 2 diabetes, more than 15 years, 80% of them having some retinopathy, right? Microalbuminuria and or nephropathy, 30% and 30 So one third. Again, remember, if there were 20 years to start with and they became, had one third of them having nephropathy by the time they were 35, the inevitability of chronic kidney disease becomes so much more. And that is a matter of huge concern. And again, this is a breakup from Dr. Mohan's clinic. Overall diabetic retinopathy in type 2 diabetes of the young, one third of which about 10% had sight-threatening diabetic retinopathy. Please understand the burden which this country is likely to face with this problem. And what were the factors which are associated? This was the type. This is again from Dr. Mohan's clinic. We'll show you some data on incident disease in a moment. But duration of diabetes in the presence of microalbuminuria, so presence of another diabetic complication, 
and for type 1 and for type 2 in addition there was also a relationship with diastolic pressure and poor beta cell reserve and worsening glucose control again suggesting that a method trying to keep other complications in check and improving diabetes management would definitely retard the progression of disease now this is another interesting study which which shows which possibly reflects on our management to some extent. So this was a comparison of type 1 diabetes microvascular complications in South Asians in India and their comparison with South Asians who had migrated from UK. This is work from Leicester in the UK, which is a very high population of uh, uh, Gujarati South Asians and white Europeans in Leicester. And you can see Indians in India had a th and this is after adjustment for a range of things, including age of diagnosis, duration of disease, sex, height, BMI, systolic pressures, A1C, and total cholesterol. Despite this adjustment, Indians in India had a threefold higher likelihood of diabetic kidney disease as compared to their cousins who had gone to the UK, and fivefold more than white Europeans, and a similar twofold excess of retinopathy in comparison to those populations. Interestingly, the neuropathy risk was not different at all. Let's move to cardiovascular disease risk factors. I mentioned we don't have so many events there, fortunately, but we have risk factors. And what we looked at was five or six risk factors, smoking, alcohol use, obesity, high blood pressure, abdominal obesity, and dyslipidemia. And this is a study which restricted to the Delhi and Chennai centers of the Young Diabetes Registry. And we did it because between Dr. Mohan's group and our group, we run a population-based cohort, which also looks at, uh, uh, so this is called the CARS cohort, which has at the moment uh, about uh, 20,000 people uh, under follow-up between Delhi and Chennai. So we looked at uh, the type one diabetes, in the registry in Chennai and Delhi and compared it to an age match set of controls from the population in Delhi and Chennai from the CARS cohort. And as you can see, there was actually not a huge difference in the clustering of cardiovascular disease risk factors in people with type 1 diabetes compared to control. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, some in some instances, for, for fewer number of risk factors, there was uh, excess in type 1 diabetes. But Overall, it looked not very, very different. Now, if you now look at youth onset type 2 diabetes and compare it with controls, you'll realize one thing, that the clustering of risk factors, three, four or more, was more in people with youth onset type 2 diabetes compared to controls. And when you compared youth onset type 2 diabetes with youth onset type 1 diabetes, this difference again persisted. So clearly, the youth onset type 2 diabetes not only have a higher prevalence of microvascular complications, but also have a larger clustering of cardiovascular disease risk factors, suggesting that in time to come, they will also have a higher likelihood of cardiovascular events, a matter of, again, significant concern. And now let me come to the last bit of my, uh, of my talk and give you a little insight into incidence of complications. Remember, what we've talked about all this while has been cross-sectional data on the prevalence or burden of complications. But let me give you a sense of what the natural history of complication in youth onset type 1 to type 2 diabetes in India is. Again, this data was from the registry, but we've done it predominantly from AIMS in Delhi and the MDRF site in Chennai. And what we really, in a, in a, in a study for incident complications, essentially you start with a bunch of human beings who do not have that complication of interest at the time they start entry into the squad. So let's say we're interested in retinopathy. Everybody in Ames, Delhi and MDRF who were part of the registry who did not have documented retinopathy entered into this analysis and were followed up for a period of five years. Either they developed a complication or they became lost to follow up or we censored the data after five years. This was what we did for people with retinopathy. If they had at baseline no retinopathy, but they had any other microvascular complications, that was 
noted, but that did not cause their exclusion from this. So when we look at incident retinopathy, we had everybody st at starting point who had no retinopathy. They could have had some other complication. For incident nephropathy, as long as they didn't have nephropathy at baseline, they could have had any other complication or no complication. And that's how this study was really conducted. Now, I just want to point out a couple of things before I proceed with the actual data. The numbers are actually pretty large. So 800 patients were evaluated for incident type 1 diabetes and about just under 400 patients for incident type 2 diabetes. And we looked at the Delhi and Chennai data to see whether there were any differences. There were no differences in their gender distribution, the age of diagnosis, the RHP1C, the BMIs and blood pressures. The two different points were that the patients who were enrolled in Chennai were slightly older. Now that could be a Referral bias with Dr. Mohan's clinic being predominantly perceived as a clinic for adults, whereas the Delhi data had younger people also because people like me also see children with type 1 diabetes. And the second thing, as a result of that, the duration of diabetes was a little bit less in the Delhi data as compared to the Chennai data. But other than that, the basic characteristics were very much similar. This is a busy looking slide, but it's a very, very important slide. And let me explain it to you so that it becomes clearer. So this is what is going to tell you row by row the incidence of different microvascular complications, retinopathy, neuropathy, and nephropathy. One and two refer to type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. At risk means the people at start point who did not have retinopathy and they had type 1 diabetes, and this is the number of people with type 2 diabetes who did not have retinopathy at baseline, and similar numbers. You can see the numbers will vary for neuropathy and nephropathy, but these are the starting points of people who are then followed. These are number of events, and this is the incident rate. Now, without going into actual numbers, but it is saying that 2% of everybody with type 1 diabetes actually developed retinopathy annually. But again, the important message here is that the incidence of retinopathy in type 2 diabetes was threefold higher in people with type 2 diabetes, right? So not only was the prevalence higher, but clearly new or incident events were higher in retinopathy with type 2 diabetes, were nearly fivefold higher for neuropathy and were about threefold higher for nephropathy. So a matter of huge concern. This is a fairly largest population at risk. Events have been followed up, adequate duration, and this is the number. So 2% annual accrual of retinopathy in type 1, 6% in type 2, right? And that's a very, very large number. Right. And so it's a matter of huge, huge concern as far as we're worried about. And therefore, if you look at any complication, you see that the likelihood of a type two, a person with youth onset type two diabetes getting a complication, a new complication is threefold higher than type one diabetes. And this is just to show you a survival curve, which looks at Diabetes type is a predictor of incidence, but restricting the analysis for people whose age was more than 10 years and duration was more than five years, which is when you really start expecting microvascular complications, especially in type 1 diabetes. And you can see this is the in the blue is type 1, in the red is type 2. This is a survival curve. So it shows that over a period of follow up, how many people with type 1 or type 2 diabetes do not have a calcul uh, do not have a complication and you can see the dis the difference is very clear by the time you're about 10 to 12 years of follow up only 25% of people with type 2 diabetes rending up without a complication of retinopathy again a very significant difference here in neuropathy and in nephropathy so any microvascular complication Insulin disease, if you're more than 10 years of age and more than five years duration, the difference is marked and the same two to three fold higher incidence becomes obvious in this analysis. So again, in this, we then decided to look at it in some more detail and decided to, un to adjust 
the different characteristics so that we are sure that there are the differences which we are observing between type 1 and type 2 diabetes incidence of complications are not because of uh, known variables. So we've adjusted for age of diagnosis, gender, duration of disease, a duration of diabetes, the location, because as I said, Chennai seem to have a higher, uh, a different way of ascertaining the, the retinopathy, BMI, blood pressure, and any other microvascular complication at baseline. And what really comes to is even after adjustment, the, the incidence of any microvascular complication is about just under twofold higher in people with type 1 diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes as compared to their compatriots with type 1 diabetes, and it's about two to fourfold depending on which particular complication you're looking at. So this is a fairly detailed granular analysis which shows that the incidence of disease is very different. And by and large, the important predictors will remain duration of disease in any complication at baseline. And as you see, to some extent, there's a marginal influence of control. So let me stop here with some basic conclusions that I'm fortunate to have been part of the ICMR Young Diabetes Registry and several people uh, in the audience, I've known Dr. Mohan has been a very, very strong contributor to this, have enabled us collation of data from different regions of India, uh, there is a very interesting regional variation in proportion of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but in equally important for the purpose of this talk and for the purpose of the way I hope we will approach our patients with youth onset type 2 diabetes. There is a very, very high difference between both prevalence and incidence of microvascular complications and cardiovascular disease risk factors between youth onset type 2 diabetes and youth onset type 1 diabetes. I must emphasize that youth onset type 2 diabetes appears to be a more aggressive disease than the usual later onset type 2 diabetes, which we see in people who are 40, 50 or older. We must be very, very careful about how we manage them. We must be very aggressive in controlling the glucose and other risk factors, and we must be very careful in screening and monitoring for their complications. There are very interesting com comparisons with other ethnic populations, which we are now in a position to do. But most importantly, I think we have our own data from India, which I hope will influence the way we uh, manage our, our patients with youth onset diabetes. Let me stop here with this. Uh, one of my uh, research fellows took this photograph. It's very difficult to believe, but this actually is a panoramic view of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences from the balcony outside my lab. And you can see it's a very nice and expansive uh, thing. My office is from where the, where, the, where, the, where the photograph was taken. This is the main hospital building. One part has been cut out. This is the Cardiothoracic Neurosciences Center. This is where the cancer hospital is. And this is where a whole new bunch of new buildings have come up, including my outpatient clinic. And actually, where this, this tower is, is, well, is where I reside which is a little far away from the place, but it's also visible from this, uh, from this panoramic photograph. Thank you so much once again for allowing me to present this data. Thank you so much for bestowing upon me the honor of speaking in an oration which is named after such a prominent and such a great physician from Gujarat. Thank you so much once again.